Namaskar, this is Late Edition. Tonight we'll discuss the Prime Minister's ongoing visit to Japan. Dr. Manmohan Singh addressed the Kaideman, that's the Japan Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and also the Japan India Cooperation Committee. And uh, he outlined Japan's contribution to India's economic development, especially assistance in some of the iconic infrastructure projects such as the Delhi Metro and the dedicated freight corridor. And to discuss the Prime Minister's visit to Japan, joining us in the studio, Dr. Sriram Cholia is Professor and Dean at the Jindal School of International Affairs. Dr. Cholia, Japan was uh, giving us a lot of overseas development assistance and uh, helped in various projects. Uh, there's the Delhi Metro also, there's the Industrial Corridor. <coughs> but uh, now we've signed this SEPA as well recently. and. Uh, the Prime Minister also talked about $18 billion not being enough. You know, we should move forward. The potential is much bigger. What do you think is the potential? Well, it's enormous. It should have... Um, actually, this SIPA <coughs> is almost two years old. We still not uh, yielded the kind of dramatic trade increases that we were hoping. But they've set targets now, ambitious targets to reach 25 or $30 billion in the next few years. And uh, in fact, it's a, it's, a, it's a tragedy in a way that uh, we have rediscovered each other, Japan and India, rather late in the day, uh, when Japan's uh, uh, trade ties with its neighbors are enormous, with South Korea and with Japan, for example, phenomenal sums. Uh, and India itself is actually doing extraordinary trade with China. So uh, it's indeed, um, uh, I think, late in the day for us to realize that there's this potential. And there's also, you know, in terms of export structure and complementarity of the two economies, it's pretty strong. They're more capital intensive, uh, um, industrialized and highly high tech uh, based uh, uh, economy and ours is more agriculture and uh, s small and medium enterprises. Right. So I think there is a scope for uh, taking this much further than it has happened so far. Part of the problem is that investors on our side, their side, traders, they have multiple avenues. So okay. for them to choose Japan or for them, for the Japanese to choose India, it also needs a degree of state shepherding and guidance and push because okay. we want to advance the strategic relationship via the economic ties. And sure. therefore, it's important that the governments on both sides give this a priority and push the, um, uh, the chambers and the uh, corporations on both sides to take each other more seriously. Uh, Dr. Cholia, as far as uh, Shinzo Abe is concerned himself, uh, He's uh, coming with a big mandate this time round, 294 seats. He has an absolute majority. Looks like he may run last his term, one of the few uh, Japanese uh, prime ministers to do so. I think he's uh, in the last so many years, he, there have been so many prime ministers that, uh, you know, every time the, the prime minister is saying, he goes and meets a new prime minister there. But uh, he's also brought in reforms in, uh, into Japan, and uh, the economy seems to have uh, turned around a little bit there. At least the stock markets are buoyant. There is a bounce in the Japanese economy, certainly. Abenomics, as it's called, mm -hmm. uh, is uh, using uh, what is called quantitative easing. and. Uh, uh, supplying a lot of money into the system, even though it is increasing the deficit, um, what they have taken a gamble that they need to revive growth and demand. Some of it is also going to benefit us because some of the institutional um, uh, portfolio uh, investments from Japan, uh, which is flush with cash, is going to come into India and it has been helping our current account deficit uh, management and so on. We would hope that some of it also comes into our invest infrastructure investment uh, uh, portfolio as well. So all these mean that uh, we are less concerned about the depreciation of the yen and those sort of issues, firstly because our trade with Japan is, as I said, uh, still um, uh, far from being uh, ideal in right. terms of volumes. So we are not that affected by the depreciation of the yen, although there is an issue of the uh, trade deficit. So overall, the abenomics uh, is helpful to us in two ways. One, um, it gets us more funds uh, across. Mm -hmm. uh, and the two, if Japan is strong, if Japan is economically strong, it can also spend more on its military and is going to be able to create greater strategic balance in East Asia. Because when okay. we talk about Japan's growth, we cannot leave out China and our concerns, you know, it's a triangle and we cannot ignore that. So as long as Japan is sure. uh, on the ascent, uh, I think it's good news for India. Dr. Cholia, this... Uh well, Shinzo Abe, looking at the security uh, situation, he seems to suggest what he wants in India-Japan cooperation in building uh, the Asian security uh, architecture. Uh, not he, Moving beyond the United States, uh, how do you view this? 
uh, and the future collaborations in terms of uh, you know strategic and uh, military matters because I think they have a they have a, we have a special uh, dialogue which is foreign secretary and defense secretary level dialogue which is unique to this to India and Japan yeah Shinzo Abe uh, incidentally is one of the originators of the concept of the Indo-Pacific realm which is marrying the concepts of the Indian Ocean region and the Asia Pacific region and turning them into a single seamless whole by which he means the free movement of navies of um, allied nations and so on uh, and he has also been advocating this whole alliance of democracies concept he talks he's spoken about the arc of freedom in which India has figured prominently along with Australia and sometimes the United States uh, during Shinzo Abe's previous term uh, as Prime Minister we had done the Malabar exercises involving not only Japan India but also the US Australia and Singapore to which the Chinese had objected. So um, Shinzo Abe certainly has a vision for um, um, uh, some kind of uh, security um, uh, alliance or let's say a coalition among uh, democratic nations. I think India will be a little wary of being identifying with an alliance that would seem to be uh, implicitly anti-Chinese. Right. But certainly uh, to the extent that uh, we have our own issues with the freedom of navigation. That's why it's important. We should read behind the lines when the Prime Minister says we want freedom of navigation as per international law. Because that has been our line with regard to uh, what has happened in the South China Sea disputes uh, right. between Vietnam and, and China. And the other thing is the Prime Minister himself has spoken about this stretch between the Indian Ocean to the Pacific. And so certainly uh, India has integrated itself into the East Asian structures and the Asia Pacific structures more right. in recent years. Uh, and it's also part of the East Asia summit and all these things so I think uh, it is incumbent upon us to also take up this um, uh, hand of partnership from Japan okay and try to see where our two navies can do interoperability missions so that it advances our uh, mutual security interests so that we are not uh, in any way facing a hegemonistic situation in the in the Asian waters